Are you having trouble wholesaling? Is the wholesaling business walking up to you, kicking you square in the balls? If it is, that's fine. I want to talk to you about your wholesale business failures, your wholesale business uh, difficulties, and a possible alternative that may feel a little less nut kicky. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Jay Wise here. I am working for investors like you every day to work with you, to help you get your real estate business off the ground or to help you expand it. And also just to give you, you know, general tips, tricks, advice, and hopefully a little bit of entertainment. Now, today, we're with my guy, Elliot. Elliot, you're an investor from Portland. And we have been working together a little bit here, me and you, to get you in on some wholesale deals, right? Reason you want to do wholesaling with me instead of at home in Portland is simple. You don't have a ton of money. Okay, you don't have a ton of money to work with, so you want it to be in a market that's a lot cheaper, right? You're out there in Portland, dude. Like, you want to wholesale a deal, you might have to drop 800K to pick it up, right? Now, here's the thing. Some of you guys out there are like, yo, what are you talking about, dude? I just, I just got back from the internet. I signed up for a seminar. You don't even need money to wholesale. What's this guy talking about? You just put it under contract and assign the contract to collect your fee. Yeah, okay, good luck with that, bro. Let me know how that works out for you, okay? What the gurus don't explain to you, you dipstick, is that what you're doing, right? Putting it under contract, getting an end buyer, collecting a fee, you never actually own the property. Guess what you just did? You brokered a sale between a buyer and a seller. You know what you need to broker sales in America? You need a real estate license, all right? So that's illegally broker in real estate. It's illegal, all 50 states. You get a lot of hot water for that, right? Uh, I'm in Ohio, Ohio Division of Real Estate, regular real issues fines. The largest fine I ever seen them issue to somebody for unlicensed activity was like almost 900K, right? Not to mention that shit don't work. You know, the only people that make money is the people selling like the, you know, the three-day seminars, this or that. That's why everybody does it, right? So, uh, that notwithstanding. So, all of you that are still with me, some people dropped off. I just got it on I can wholesale it out by anything. I'm smart. I got to go to work at Subway later, but I know more than this guy. Okay, great. See you guys later. Peace out. We don't need you. The rest of you are like, hey, man. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pay attention to this dude because he sold $200 million worth of real estate. He knows what he's talking about. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do something illegal. Which, by the way, if you're still watching and you don't have a problem doing something illegal, I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you're going to do something illegal, don't try to wholesale houses. Wholesaling houses is hard. You have to find like motivated sellers. You have to understand the ARV. You have to put out a ton of offers, do a ton of due diligence. You have to understand what the end buyers are looking for. you got to spend a ton of money on marketing. And like these deals, if the bigger your spread is, like the wider your estimates need to be and the, the more uh, spots you could make mistakes and, and mess things up, uh, the higher your carrying costs are going to be. The moral of the story is it's actually kind of a difficult business. Like that's what I do professionally. I've sold $200 million with real estate. I know what I'm talking about, but I'll tell you it's a hard business. So if you're trying to do an illegal business, I would skip all of that and just sell heroin. That's really fucking simple. It's like super simple. You buy some heroin and you're like, hey, who wants heroin? And then you don't have to sell anybody on heroin. It's heroin. It's addictive. People come to you for that, right? Like, people are like, oh, man, this is so easy. It's like selling heroin, right? But you'd be actually selling heroin. Super fucking easy to sell heroin. You literally go, hey, bruh, heroin. Do you want it? And people are addicted to it, and they get it. You don't even need a customer service department. Like, one-star reviews on Google, not going to bother you. Like, my business, right? Got, like, 330 uh, reviews on Google, some of which are one-star reviews from tenants who are upset. Like, oh, I didn't pay rent. They evicted me. They're horrible landlords. You don't have to deal with that if you're selling heroin, folks. There's no Google reviews for your local heroin dealer. So if you're trying to do an illegal business, I would say that is easier. If you are trying to run a legal business in real estate wholesaling, I'm glad you're still with me because Elliot is still with me, and that's why he hooked up with me because I help Elliot. 
get to a cheaper market. Because Elliott don't have 800K to buy a property, hold till we can sell, and then make the money. Get the spread, right? You buy low, you sell high. That's what wholesaling is, right? Again, what the gurus are teaching you is brokering real estate illegally. Elliott ain't licensed to broker real estate in Ohio, right? So he partners with me. I help him do that. Now, with all of that, Elliot, I will say this to you. Uh, we're putting out a lot of offers, and all of our offers thus far have been declined. That's okay. That's to be expected. I send out freaking 20,000 pieces of direct mail every month. I don't know if that's the exact amount. I got all my guys running it. Uh, but it's like a lot, okay? Some months are a little less, some are more. But, you know, throughout the course of the year, uh, I'm sending out in the six-figure range of direct mail motivated seller marketing, okay? I don't do a hundred thousand dollar or a hundred thousand deals every year folks okay that's the thing when you're trying to wholesale you got to get in front of a lot of sellers it is uh like fishing right the bigger the net the more fish you're going to catch and never catch all the fish so you got to do a lot of that and that's what me and elliot are going through and elliot i'm here with you we're still going to kick off these offers kick off these offers but in the interim i wanted to show you something i got this and i'm gonna do another video for you later uh a similar type property with the amount of money you've showed me that you have, I know you don't want to spend it all. I think you just said you got like 120 k in the bank account, but you don't want to spend it all. You're looking to uh, not spend more than like 20 grand. You're just kind of playing around, dipping your toe in this market. So I'm going to still keep looking for wholesale deals for you. But, bro, in addition to that, I think you're forgetting how cheap this market is. I got a rental property deal for you where you're only going to have to tie up 15 k long term. I'll get you a loan for the rest, dude. How about that? 15k right so wholesaling is great but it should just be one tool in the toolbox it's not the easiest business in the world folks can i help you make money with it sure do it every day but it takes time it takes a lot of work takes a lot of effort and a well-rounded investor can do a lot of different things long-term buy and hold short-term rentals flipping houses wholesaling right it should just be one tool in the toolbox and i know you got you got that small amount of money you've identified to play around with. So how about we take a look at a long-term rental? It's only going to need 15K out of your pocket, Elliot. If you dig this, I can get more videos like this out to you. If not, you want to focus more heavily on all the wholesale deals, we'll keep those coming, brother. Let me know after you watch the rest of this video. I'm going to take a quick break uh, and then get into all of that shortly. Welcome back, folks. We are going to pull up the number on this one. The numbers, 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 plural, plural. There's more than one number. Come on. Now, this property, this is a mighty fine property. I like this property quite a bit, right? Now, as far as the property itself goes, is it, like, amazing? Does it blow my mind? Is this, like, the greatest house in the world? No, it's just, like, a regular friggin' house, dude. It's, like, dated. It's not amazing, Okay. But the money this house can make real estate investors like you, that's why I'm excited, right? Now, this is in the Cleveland market, Cleveland, Ohio area, folks. This is important. It's in the city of Lorraine, 1241 Reed Avenue, Lorraine, Ohio, listed at 65K. It's been on the market forever, 165 days. The fact that this is, the fact that this is in Lorraine is awesome. Now, I work with investors every day who... Essentially, like the most common customer we have here at Holton Wise, and I'm sure as you're watching this, this is possibly you, right? You're sitting out there on your couch, probably with your underwear on. You probably ain't wearing pants because you're on your couch. You got Cheeto dust in your beard. I get it. You're watching TV, and you're like, hey, that real estate's real cheap. It ain't, it ain't this cheap where I live, right? That's, that's, that's our primary customer, right? Our primary customer is like, damn, dude, I'm getting sick of super expensive real estate in my market. This market's way cheaper. Damn, I'm sick of horrible landlord-tenant policies and crazy socialistic policies in my market. This market's cheaper, right? So you start Googling, like, yo, what's up with the best cash flow markets? Where's the best cash flow rental properties? Things like that. And usually, ultimately, you end up at Cleveland because we're always in the top 10, right? Everybody's like, Cleveland, great for cash flow, okay? 
And then you end up here because I'm the expert in the Cleveland market. Now, with all that said, Lorraine, oh, man, we got a, we got some opportunity, right? Why? Because a bunch of people are Googling the same shit you're Googling, and they're all coming to Cleveland. But here's the deal. The metro area, Holton Wise, we work the whole Northeast Ohio area. The metro area we service, we got like three, four, five million people, okay? The city of Cleveland itself, only about 350,000 people, right? So everybody is focusing on the city of Cleveland, and they're missing all these other little suburbs and areas like that. Lorraine, about a half hour west of Cleveland, different county. Lots of opportunity. If this property was in Cleveland proper, we'd have basically the same amount of rental income, basically the same type of tenant base, but the price would probably be twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more expensive. On top of that, guess what, folks? The news just dropped that they're building like a, a naval base or like a, a naval shipyard or something to do with the Navy and building things, a huge plant. There's going to be several thousand jobs affecting uh, this area. I'm going to put out some more content on that when I do a little more research. I literally just saw that pop off uh, on all my various social media feeds a couple days ago, but I was already high on Lorraine uh, after the fact because, or before that, because the pricing, in my opinion, better because there's not this influx of investors, right? Everybody's going and focusing here, and we're kind of just squeezing out all these deals that, in my opinion, have a little bit better profit margin. On top of that, uh, the city of Lorraine, much easier to deal with than the city of Cleveland, okay? You guys know how I feel about the mayor of Cleveland. Woo! Now, all that is in addition to this new uh, naval base that's being built. It's going to, uh, I think I saw an article, it was like estimated for like 3,000 jobs. So I'm very, very happy with Lorraine. Solid like C-ish type area, right? So that's why I love this deal so much. And then, you know, we're going to go through the numbers here momentarily. Uh, so, again, it's not because a house is amazing. It's because the things this house can do for us are amazing. Now, this tenant in there, you saw that the property already had a tenant in there. They're paying about 800 It's market rent. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not market rent. That's not market rent, rather. Market rent's 1000 They're paying 800 on a month-to-month -month lease. Now, when we take it over, are we going to increase them to market rent, which is 1000 a month immediately? No, because you saw in the photos the property was dated. You don't want to do that because if you go 200 up immediately, they'll probably move out, and then you got to spend like 10 grand uh, making the house look fresh again. I mean, yeah, you'll still get an ROI if you do that, but what's better is to just slowly increase their rent and try to get them as close to that thousand as quickly as you can without pushing them out because you don't want to remove 800 coming in just to drop 10k. You want to keep the money coming in. So we go up 25, we go up 50, small amounts, right? But long term, this is what we're looking at. 12k a year comes in, fixed and variable expense estimates. I have Holton Wines do all the management for you, folks. Does not matter where you live. My team does it all. Sold over 200 million dollars worth of properties like this. Think about that. We're looking at a $65,000 list price here. You know how many properties priced at $65,000 you have to sell to get to $200 million? Boop, 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 boop. Bust that out into your iPhone. That's like a lot. I know what I'm doing, okay? So, should clear, pretty conservative estimate here, uh, approximately $62.44 a year on average. That doesn't mean every year you get that. Some years will be better, some will be worse. But if you own a bunch of properties similar to this one over the long haul, that's the amount of money I expect you to make. Now, as far as price goes, it's been on the market for a very long time, right? That's good, okay? It's going to allow us to get a discount. Why has it been on the market for so long? What's the red flags? There ain't no red flags. I just explained to you earlier, people are focused on Cleveland. It would have been sold if it was Cleveland. Lorraine, not a lot of people are looking on Lorraine. That's one. Number two, think about it. It's a house. There's two kinds of people that could buy this house. People that want to live in this house or real estate investors who want a rental income. Well, guess what? All the people that want to live in this house, they're not interested in this house because there's already a tenant living there. Cuts off half your buyer base. Now you just have investors. Well, half the damn investors are only paying attention to Cleveland because that's what pops up in all the news articles, number one. Number two, the other half might not realize that the property actually has a market rent of 1000 They're only looking at it as 800 So we're going to get a sneaky good deal here, right? So because of all that, I think I could beat the sellers down on price a little bit. I think I'm at 60 you finance that, it's 15K down, 45K for the loan. Should project out long term, 27% cash on cash return in a nice solid neighborhood. Great area for cash paying tenants as well as Section 8 tenants. That's like my bread and butter. I like to be in those neighborhoods uh, where you can go either, right? If you're in like super risky neighborhoods, you kind of have to go Section 8 or else you'll never be able to collect rent. Uh, or if you're in like really, really nice neighborhoods, uh, you really probably don't want Section 8 people living in areas with. Uh, 
properties like that because you get so many tenants that have great credit and like have jobs and have like stable income so you wouldn't need to go section eight because a section eight tenant is going to be a little more risky usually than like a tenant with a forty five thousand dollar year salary and like a 700 credit score uh, but in areas like that, you have to pay a lot more than 60K. So, like, I find this to be, like, my favorite sweet spot for investing. So uh, check out the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, where I graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale uh, based upon risk factors and things like that. So, like, areas like this is where, where I, I, I dig my investing. But you as an investor can have a totally different uh, risk tolerance and investment profile. So it's not like A is better than B. Or C is better than D. That's not what it means. It means this is what A is. This is what B is. These are the risks, the costs, things of that nature, right? So for me, like, I don't really invest in A neighborhoods, okay? I like to invest in, like, C-ish. Like, B, C, and D are, like, the three that I like to invest in. Probably C is, like, the, the most common one. But, you know, you check out the guide. See what works for you. But I like this little sweet spot. So let me know if you want me to write this offer for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.